beautiful natural landscape is displayed before us. A land of cracks, swamps, trees, and natural walking tracks. Australia natural beauty. This is what the suburb of Dardanong one was, but today this is completely unfamiliar to us. However, with the loss of this landscape, it has allowed for different cultures and community to thrive. As nature, it is place with a rich social culture. The suburb of Dandanang, which today is being fondly named the City of Opportunity, is a landscape that one was idolized for its green pastures, but today it contains a wide range of ethnic communities and cultures. Architecturally, the melting pot of culture is displayed through the various businesses and building aesthetics that vary throughout the suburb in their respective cluster. The story of Dandanang is one of immense change from its indigenous roof to its colonial past, leading to the multicultural community that continue to live today. Dandanang, whose name was created through its indigenous name Tanjanong, have an indigenous story that spanned over 35,000 years. During this time, the land was being occupied by the Bunarong people and Wurundjeri people of the Gulen Nation. It has been believed that the two clans met here seasonally for the exchange of resources and knowledge between the two communities. There have been conflict between researchers of the primary occupant of the land. However, many argue that it is the Bunurong door to a local daytime story of the ancestor Luhan. The story consists of Luhan forming the lowest Dainanong as excellent country and creating the Bunurong people to take care of and protect this land. The influence of the Bunurong and Wurundjeri communities is still shown physically through the scarred trees that are located throughout the suburb and create a long-lasting legacy of the connection of their communities to the land today. These trees were scarred for the use of shelter, material, watercraft, and various tools which would have been a likely influence toward the settlement in this area and for the migration of people in the future. However, a large amount of the rich history was lost due to colonial influence that resulted in the loss of 18% of indigenous population in Dandanong. One element of Dandanong that linked the Aboriginal population and that of Colonial era Dardanong is the Aboriginal Station and Native Police Corps. The Native Police Corps was a system set up by European colonists where they assigned Aboriginal troopers to work in the police under the command of the of white officer to deal with dispute between Aboriginal and colonizer. The Dardanong branch is directly known for being the headquarters of the program led by Henry Denner, who was responsible for two massacres of the local Aboriginal population. In an effort for reconciliation, the site is now named the Dandenong Police Paddock Reserve. In honor of the traditional owners of the land, Bunurong people, as a refuge of native plant and animal species. Dandenong began its colonial life in 1837 when it was settled as a postal run. Due to its large green land, British farmers began to occupy the land for use for cattle grazing, making it a hotspot for livestock and their respective farms. This led people throughout Victoria to gather in Dandenong, which transformed into a market town for livestock that further led to machinery as the Industrial Revolution began to expand globally. With their initial colonization structures such as the St. James Church in 1864 and the Dandenong Town Hall in 1890 was formed and designed under English Gothic with its display in the church pointed arch and stained glass window. The free classical architectural style is displayed within the exterior of the town hall through its asymmetrical element with the clock tower and it used the local material with the bluestone pass. Both of the building was constructed in order for the colonizer to establish their power over the land. The development of this area resulted in the birth of Longdale Street, such as retail and shopping hub, which include chain shopping such as Mayer, Volvo's and Co., 
along with a range of car manufacturing businesses. Within our visit to the suburb, we were able to see that day, long districts still hold a large amount of car manufacturing and machinic businesses. This show that focus on vehicles still show its legacy among this main street. The introduction of large retail chain to the suburb built in reputation to what it would be described as a second Melbourne. One of the first major waves of non-European migration to Dandenong occurred after the event of World War II, ending in 1945. This began with a large range of Italian, Greek, and Russian immigrants that moved to Australia to begin a new life with the opportunity to work for the various brick working factories that thrive due to locally obtained clay. What followed this was a large amount of Vietnamese migration aiming to escape the event of the Vietnam War 1955 to 1975, resulting in them becoming one of the major cultural demography of Dandenong, 6% of total population. Today, the Vietnamese stem on the Dandenong Shire is the most prominent in its northwest, today named Springwell, where there is a large amount of Vietnamese cuisine found at the intersection of Springwell Road and Queen Avenue. However, in the modern day, the most prominent culture in Greater Dandenong are the Indian and Afghan communities, which are visually displayed in Dandenong landscape as the Indian precinct and the Afghan precinct. The Indian precinct, also named Little Indian, is an area established in 1990 that brought of it British saris, authentic cuisine, and tantalizing sweets and it is easily recognizable by the white brain shop fronts. In this image, we can also see that the chosen color blue, pink, yellow, and green coincide with the common color used within the Hindu festival Holi. In addition, the largest cultural portion of Dandenong and the community it is most well known for, it is Afghan community. The largest component of Afghan citizen is the ethnic group of the Hazaras from Afghanistan who largely immigrated during the late 1990 in an effort to escape the tyranny of the Taliban that was invaded the country. The Afghan prison, which was previously occupied by the Dutch, is found in central Dandenong and includes shops selling products such as clothing, food, and spices that provide the resource needed by the Hazara people. However, one of the most well-recognized points of Afghan cell is not within the Afghan prison, but in the north of the supper in the Dandenong market named the Afghan Bazaar. This market highly resembles that of a market in Afghanistan such as that of the famous Noor Bazaar in Kabul. Dandenong of the 21st century is working toward rebuilding its reputation to become the second Melbourne is one worse. Unfortunately, the separate culture and history are often overlooked due to its high crime rate and high unemployment rate within the area, resulting in it being looked down upon among another Melbourneian supper. The revitalizing Central Dandenong project was pitched in 2020 by the Victorian government in an effort to create a new dwelling, a hotel, a conference center, office, and community center. One factor that contributed to the pitch of revitalization of the area was the construction of Harmony Square in 2014, which acts as the heart of the Greater Dandenong City Council. Harmony Square was where the power of the city council was moved from its original location of the drum theater. This community area is an example of how Dandenong moved away from designing in accordance with classicism and colonial architecture and more toward what is practical and relevant design toward the diverse and social community they hold today. Dandenong is a prime example of the distinct stage of origin colonialism and migration in which aspect of architecture and decorative design are scattered throughout the suburb. However, for the future, the built environment is working toward building space that address social and cultural issues to create a united community that display the strength of the people who live there and the power they hold as a collective. Overall, we found this experience to be eye-opening, 
By educating ourselves about this suburb, we are able to see the beautiful communities that are unfortunately overshadowed by negative reputation given to Dananong. From this day on, we will be able to instead associate the site as a local community built from strength, endurance, and collaboration. And we hope that the new seawall development will allow another to see the beauty it holds as well. With the destruction of its stereotype, we are able to build that amount to its full potential.